By the way, there are times I have said a joke and I've seen somebody say, I receive it. And then they've come and said, I received your joke and God, actually they didn't think it was a joke, they thought it was a prophecy. They received it and God blessed them. That's just a demonstration that it's not the prophet, it is the anointing of God. Because the prophet was not trying to bless him, you're just saying something. But when you received it, God blessed you. Are you understanding? It's not about the person. It's not about the person. Wow. Tell your neighbor again, we are those people. I want you to shout it to your neighbors here. Give me my mountain. Give me yeah. Mountain. Give me my mountain. You know, there were two guys who are of the same generation. One was Joshua, one was Caleb. They are both famous men. They are both known as great heroes. Anybody call Joshua? Yeah, anybody with a relative called Joshua? Yeah, yeah there are many. Anybody with a relative called Caleb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see? I mean, they are, so fa they are so powerful that people have named children after them thousands of years after they died. Very powerful men. But as I read through the scriptures, God showed me a difference between those two men. Both men were anointed. Both men were sent out on mission. But God showed me a difference I'd never noticed in his word. And that's what I want to end our gathering with before we pray. Both were faithful to God. Both had a clear call to represent God in the next generation. Both were respected warriors. Both were revered generals among God's people. Both experienced God's grace and victories. Tell your neighbor, but. Yeah, there's always a but like that, isn't it? There's a difference between them. Let me read you a scripture. Joshua 11.23. Both their stories are in the book of Joshua. Eh? So Joshua 11.23. It's a very interesting uh, scripture. Joshua 11.23, it says, So Joshua took the entire land, just as the Lord had directed Moses, and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Then the land had rest from war. Isn't that powerful? The man took the land, isn't it? Just like he was directed. And there was rest from war. When you read that scripture by itself, it gives a certain story. But there's another scripture you read after that that tells you a little deeper into this story. Joshua chapter 13, two chapters later, verse 1. Joshua 13, 1. When Joshua had grown old, the Lord said to him, You are now very old, and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. Uh -uh, hold on a minute. Can you go back to the verse before that? Because that's, that almost seems contradictory. What did it say before? It said what? It said Joshua took what? The entire land. Go back again. Let's go back to chapter 13 because it seems to be saying something very different from that. It says, when Joshua had grown old, the Lord said, you are now very old. There are still very large areas of land to be taken over. Is there a contradiction there? It seems like there's a contradiction. How do you take the entire land and then there are still large areas of land to be taken over? And this is what the Lord told me in this verse. It's one thing to get your inheritance. It's another thing to take possession of it. It's one thing to get an inheritance. It's another thing to take possession of that inheritance. Joshua, he was given an inheritance, the whole land, and he rested, which is good. But this is where it seems he reached a place where he was satisfied with his previous exploits. And he rested. He became comfortable with what God had done in the past. He became comfortable with the victories he had achieved. This man achieved so many victories. And he became comfortable and he rested on the victories of the past. He was happy to live in the good old days. You know, there are many Christians who are happy with the good old days. They love what God has done already in their lives. They're happy with the exploits they did for God in the past. There are many people who are very happy with what Mavuno was in the past. It's like, guys, look at what you achieved. Look at what God did through you. 
Look at what God has been able to do. I remember back in the day being invited to speak in global conferences, some large global conferences, to share the story of Mavuno as a young pastor. And you know, people just ask you, tell us your story. And me sharing what God has done. And I looked and I was so excited. You know, it was such an exciting thing to be there. It's exciting today to know that there are thousands of churches across the world that are using the Mizizi curriculum. I mean, thousands, literally. I think it was Pastor Kelonzi who said it in Family Night. I think there are 6,000 churches plus in the U.S. that are using this curriculum and not small churches. That was his testimony. Those are the good days. We've achieved great things. Thousands of people have gotten saved in this church. I still remember, by the way, doing a, 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 an altar call and 100 people getting saved in one service. One service in the same church. Wow. Those are amazing days. Those are big victories. I remember seeing people's lives change dramatically. My goodness, we have some great good old days. I've seen many nations come to the Fearless Summit and been blessed by it. And you know, it's easy to look at those times and to say, my goodness, look what the Lord has done. And you know, I've reached the place, and I want to confess at this place, there have been moments in my life when I've said, I think I've earned a rest. I feel like at this point, if I stopped and I died, there would be a good thing to, there would be a few things they would write in my eulogy that would be important. I feel like my eulogy would be quite full right now. You know how they say bath, school? If you haven't done very much, they say work, and then it's over. <laughs> For me, they could write ministry and they write a lot of things. And I was like, you know what, God? I feel like now if I start playing golf, nobody can blame me. If I now just arrange my life, I've got sons who can run the church. They don't need me. If I take my wife to Maldives and we just have holiday. Yeah. We can have rest. There are days I used to pray for rest. By the way, there are days I prayed, church planters, you know how to pray for rest. <laughs> God, we need money in our church. Last week we were 15, today we are 13. God, what are you doing? When will we ever have people? <laughs> Am I helping your neighbor? <laughs> yeah. By the way, there are times when things are so thick, you're just praying for rest. I used to pray, Lord, give me rest on every side. And then I reached a place where it's like, you know, I'm actually at rest. I'm not asking God for the church to, it's already there. I'm not asking for sons. I already have them. I'm not asking to have a name. I already have it. I'm not asking to be invited. I'm already being invited. And just reach a place where you're like, you know what? This is really nice. This is a good gig. I cannot just go on news programs and give opinions on national matters, on the position of the church, on matters of national importance. Yeah. It's very easy to reach that place, by the way. And that was Joshua. Joshua had conquered all the land in front of him. But the Bible tells us in chapter 13, there were vast areas of land that had not been conquered, yet to be conquered. Listen, God is telling you today, there are much bigger areas that you have not yet conquered. There are big areas in your mission you have not even achieved. There's huge things God has for you that you've not even begun to understand. There's much more possession for you to take. Listen, there's nothing wrong with resting. There's nothing wrong, wrong with celebrating. We have to be a church that celebrates. Next year, we are turning 20. Come on, somebody. How many know we are going to party? Some of those, big, some of those ones you start planning early. In fact, we did like a small party planning committee. And some of you guys would love to be on that team because you're the party people. We need some sanguines in that group. Although the sanguines are good for the ideas, then we need some males to actually make it happen. <laughs> it's good to celebrate what the Lord has done. The Bible was full of parties. Three times a year, the God's people are supposed to have a big party and just celebrate what God had done for them in the past. The problem is not pausing to rest or celebrate. The problem is when we yield to the temptation to stop moving forward. When we start we feel we have achieved all that we are meant to achieve. 
You see, the problem is if you fail to take all the land that God intends for you to take, you will leave space for the enemy to invade those unoccupied sections. That's the reality. If you take some of the land but not all the land, you've left space for the enemy to take the paths you haven't taken. That was Israel's experience. That the land they didn't conquer became the land of the giants. That's where the Goliaths were bred. That's why in, in times of the future, they had many enemies that came to fight them all the time, the Midianites and all those other ites, because they never did what they were supposed to do. They didn't conquer their land. And here's our danger, when you fail to possess all the land. Let me tell you, when you, for those of you who are parents, you need to understand, children are a gift from God, a beautiful gift. But God wants you to understand that you have a responsibility with those children. That's a gift. But unless you understand, it's your job to raise these ones in the ways of the Lord. And that that's the most important thing that you can ever do. You're giving the devil servants through those children. You've just raised some servants for hell in your house. Your budget has been used to raise servants for the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. By the way, that's one of the things for Pastor Caro and I. Our priority in life, in child raising, is to bring up children who fear God. I always tell people, the kind of schools they go to is not as valuable to me as the faith they have. That's our value. And it's been interesting. Sometimes we sit with parents and we're amazed. They've planned their children's future. They've planned careers. They've planned work opportunities. They've planned amazing things. But they have no plan for their spiritual life. They have no plan. And it's like this child passed. Now we want to send them to Ivy League University. And it's like, it sounds exciting. Do you know what an Ivy League University is? It is a place of indoctrination for the devil's kingdom. That's what it is. Come on, let's be realistic as Christians. They're going to be taught everything about the faith that is wrong. And they're going to come out complete skeptics. If you have not done your work raising them up as a soldier for the kingdom, you have no business sending them to Harvard. You're sending them to ultimate destruction. They'll drive a big car, they'll have a big job, they'll have a big name, and they will hate God. And you'll have doomed them to hell. Yeah. God has given you a gift. But you must possess your possession. Tell your neighbor, possess your possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua grew tired and he failed to possess his inheritance. But Joshua's compatriot, Caleb, was of a different cloth. The Bible tells us his secret. Can we read that, that, that scripture, verse 6? Joshua 14, verse 6. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal. And Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, say to Joshua, you know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. Basically, he's like, we were together when God gave us our promise. And he says, I was 40 years old when Moses, a servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. The two of them were the spies, among the 12 spies that were sent to explore the, the land. And he said, I brought him back a report according to my convictions. Remember, there were two spies that came back with a positive report. All the rest had a negative report. And because of that, Israel was judged. But those two, Joshua and Caleb, he's like, we were together. We started together. And he said, but my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, followed the, the Lord my God wholeheartedly. He's reminding him of the good old days, the past, the great things we did for God. And so he's like, we both have achieved great things. And he said, so on that day, Moses swore to me. And by the way, it wasn't to him alone. It's like to the whole of Israel. But Caleb received that as his word. You know, sometimes you can hear a word here from Avuno, but you're like, that is my word. He took it as his word. And he said, the Lord, uh, the, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked on will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Listen, that, those words were said by a man. But because they were said by his prophet, he took that word as God's word for him. And he aligned his life to those words. And he said, now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. 
Anybody who's 85 years old in the house? Not yet. All right. 1411. This will be your words when you're 85, somebody. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I am just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Come on, somebody. Age, 85 years old. And then what does he say? He says, now, give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Ish. The Anakites were the giants, the powerful people of the land, the Goliaths of the time, Goliaths' ancestors, the people who everybody was afraid of. The ten spies had run away because they said these people will swallow us. Caleb at 85 years old is saying, those are the ones I want. <laughs> those giants. You know, some people see giants and they see how big they are. How big are they? Other people see giants and say they are so big I can't miss. <laughs> That's David. Everybody sees Goliath and they say, this guy is too big, I can't win. David says, he's too big, I can't miss. There's a difference in the Caleb spirit. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephune, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. As his, his inheritance. I want you to note a few things about Caleb real quick. Number one, Caleb knew God's word. He knew God's word. He understood God's word. He owned God's word. He says, you know what the Lord God said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. You know, many Christians read God's word, but few understand God's word for themselves. They heard what the preacher said, but they don't know what God was saying to them through that word. They didn't go deep enough to understand their word, to take their word. Some of us are here because God spoke to us a word long ago. But we don't know what God is saying to us about our lives today. Because I put it to you, God's son, God's daughter, there's a reason why God brought you to this gathering. There's a word of the Lord that God has for you. As we've been talking about anointing, there's a situation God is preparing you for in your life. Yeah, I know he's preparing Mavuno Church, but you need to know God's word for you. What is God's word for you in what we've been hearing today? You know, Many of us are driven by paying bills, not by conviction. We're not driven by a conviction of what God wants of our lives. We're driven by when we, how we'll pay the next rent, how we'll pay our school fees. But you know, you should never lose sight of what God is saying to you. That's why I want you to become people who read God's word every day. And every day, don't just read it. Ask yourself, what is God saying to me? And one of the things I love about the U version, it forces me to actually write it down. I, I copy it. I put it in the reflection place, and then I write it down so that the people that we're in the discipleship group with can also read. And you know, because of that, sometimes I read it just once, but as I'm now having to process what I'm writing, I have to think about it. I have to meditate on it. And by the time I write it, it's my word for that day. That's the word God has given to me. Ask your neighbor, do you know the word God has for you? Yeah. Do you know God's word? You need to read his word for yourself. You need to become familiar with his promises for you. You need to understand and wrestle with him to keep revealing and showing you why he created you. But the second thing about Caleb is Caleb held God to his word. He didn't just know God's word, but he did what? He held God to his word. If your neighbor is looking asleep, just shake them right now. Just tell them, wake up, wake up. This is good stuff. This is good. You can't miss this. This stuff, if you miss everything else, this one you have to get. Caleb did what? Caleb held God to his word. You know, these two had been faithful when everybody else was unfaithful. So God gave them a promise through Moses. And Moses said, the land on which your feet have walked on will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. The prophet gave them a promise. And from that time on, it became God's promise to him. It's one thing to know God's word. It's another thing to hold God to his word. When you begin to say, God, you said it, so I believe it. I believe it, so I will live it until it happens. 
That's knowing God's word and holding him at his word. God had not stopped, Caleb had not stopped trusting God for his promise. He was 85 years old. The promise had not yet come to pass, but he still believed it would come to pass. He had not given up on God, even at 85. He knew God would do exactly what he had said. He knew God would do it. You know, it's interesting because you need to understand that the reason God brought you here is because he has a word for you. God has plans for you to give you a hope and a future. God has given Mavuno a word because of you. This word called unshakable, it's not for Mavuno in general, it's for you. Yeah. God wants you to be unshakable. You need to be wrestling with this word and showing, God, show me how I need to be unshakable because the things you have for me are great in the future. Don't just say it generically. This is your word. Own it. And then hold God to it. When trouble comes and people are being shaken, say, God, you've told me. My labor in the Lord is not in vain. You've given me the command to stand strong. So I'm standing right now. Other people will be shaken. I'm not going to be shaken. Because God has said it, I believe it. And because I believe it, I will leave it until God brings it to pass. Somebody say amen. amen. You need to understand that the inheritance is there for you to possess. But you have to possess it. Yeah, people know God's promise, but how many people hold God at his word? Hold God at his word. When you know God's word for you and you hold him at his word, it doesn't matter what happens. You will not give up. Things will look difficult. Things will look hard. But in your mind, you know how it ends. You know it ends with your victory. The Lord promised it, so I cannot fail. Yeah. Me, I know what the Lord told me. The Lord told me he'll give me the ends of the earth as my possession. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know how it will happen. Sometimes I get worried, Lord, I'm growing old. I need churches in Scotland. I need it. I need churches in America. I haven't seen the ends of the earth. I need the churches in Fiji. I need churches in Japan. Those are the ends of the earth. I don't see them yet. Australia, I don't see those churches yet. But you know what? The Lord said it, and I believe it. And so I will live it until I see it come to pass. He said it, and it's a word. It's my word. You need to hold God to his word concerning you. And sometimes that word, he gives it to you through your prophet. Right now, God has said you're a fearless influencer. You're in this family. You're a fearless influencer. Some of you have not looked very fearless in your life. But you need to understand that is God's word for you. Yeah. God has said you will stand firm. You will stand firm. So even though you don't feel like you're standing firm, stand firm. Because God has said it. You need to believe it. And then you need to live it until you see it come to pass. Number three, Caleb refused to settle for less. Caleb refused to settle for less. The man said, I am still eight, I am 85 years old, and I am still strong. Now, I don't know if an 85-year-old can be as strong as a 40-year-old. That's supernatural. I wonder whether he really looked the same as when he was 40. He probably didn't. When you're 85, there are certain things that have happened to your body. There are certain things that have happened to your physique. You're no longer the guy you are, the warrior you are at, at 40. And if you notice, actually, when Caleb is given the land later, he doesn't even be, he's not even the one who leads the army. He calls for an, a hero, and his son-in-law, future son-in-law, is the one who leads the army, which means he's not the soldier he used to be. But look at how he professes it. He says, I'm still as strong today as I was at 40. What is he talking about? He's talking about his faith. He's saying, my faith hasn't changed. I still love God the way I did. I still believe in God the way I did. Some people have backslidden. And I think he's looking at Joshua as one of the backslidden people at that point. But he's saying, I ain't backslidden. God told you. In fact, why, be, why do I think he's saying that to Joshua? Because he said the promise you and I were given. But you, you've rested. I ain't resting. Until God gives me my possession. This man refused to settle for less. He decided to ask God for everything that was his. He would not settle for a comfort zone. And that's why he was not afraid of giants and fortified cities. In fact, he was like, for this really to be God, I can't, I can't go for things that I can achieve on my own strength. That's how people of faith live, by the way. I won't, I won't attempt things that I can do with my own strength. How will I give glory to God at the end of that? So I'll put up my hand for the things I can't do. Ha <laughs> ha! Somebody. Revelation is falling on somebody right now. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm not going to go for those simple things I know I can do. I'll put up for my hand for the things I can't do. I'll put up my hand for the ministries I can't do. I'll put up the, my hand for the things that everybody else is intimidated by. Why? Because I understand that there's a promise God has given me. And I will not settle for less. I will not settle for less. God has made, told me I'll make disciples of all nations. Those are not promises for one person. It's promises for everybody in this house. You will make disciples of all nations, which means you will have sons and daughters in different nations in the world. Come on. Yeah, you will. The people behind there are not saying amen. I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> yeah. It's talking about you. You will make disciples of all nations. Come on, say to yourself, I will make disciples of all nations. Yeah. Never settle for less than what God has said about you. Amen. Amen. You know, Caleb believes God's word about his destiny and his future. And that's why God gave him strength. I believe God renews your strength. The Bible says those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. By the way, I've met Christians who are in their 80s and they have more passion than a high schooler. They love God. They love missions. Some of my mentors are like that. Anybody ever sat down with Bishop Masika? I mean, Bishop Masika is, he's a force of nature. Like the guy has more, he makes me feel tired and I'm much younger than him. He's like, yeah, we were on mission. We went and preached in Pokot and then we we're going to do this. And then we're, in fact, now my next, you're like, dude, when do you, how do you do this? But you know what? The people who wait upon the Lord, the Lord renews their strength. And then there are some 80-year-olds who have done their best work. You look at them, and it looks like they're about to die. You know, the time one of my friends, and, I, and this was a very interesting uh, example, one of my friends has, ha, was telling me about his dad, and his dad is really old. His dad was really aging, and they were worried about his health, and we went and visited him. I mean, he really looked old. And then I asked him, how old is your dad? And his dad was 80 at the time. I mean, the guy was really, really old. And I was so shocked to hear he was 80. Because at that time, my dad was 80. And my dad was just getting into his stride. At 80, by the way, he climbed up Mount, what is that, Mount Sinai. Wow. He climbed up Mount Sinai. You, cl you, you, you climb it up at 3 a.m. in the morning. And they went with a group of senior citizens. The guys, the rest of the people around his age, none of them could think of climbing a mountain at 3 a.m. So my dad said, you guys sleep. And he found a group of young people in their 20s. And he scaled Mount Sinai with them at 80 years old. He used to collect his friend and they go and walk up the Ngong Hills. Uh, they would, actually, that was their exercise, walking up Ngong Hills in his 80s. The man served God until a month before he died. And then a month before he died, he got sick. He had a heart attack. He went into hospital just long enough for all his children to come from all over the world to say, we love you, to be, spend time with him, significant time. And then he went. I was like, come on, God. When my time comes to go, I want to go like that. Yeah. He, had, he served God until God took him home. In fact, I, re I realized the sickness was not for him. It was for us. Because had he died as he's climbing Gong Hills, we would not have had time to say goodbye. So God, in mercy for us, allowed him to be sick for a month. But the man at 80 was still climbing mountains. Somebody say, give me my mountain. Yeah. Some of you are not even 30 yet. But you look tired. Yeah. You don't even have zeal for God. Some of you are even in your early 20s and you, still, you already look tired. You've not even done missions yet and you're tired. You don't even have zeal for God. Tell your neighbor, see your life. Yeah. How? How can you be tired and you're so young? How? Tell your other neighbor, give me my mountain. Yeah. That's the shout we should all be having. We should be telling God, God, I want more. I want to disciple more people. I want my discipleship group to grow bigger. I want to go to the ends of the earth and represent you. I want wealth so I can support your ministry. Give me my mountain. I want my school to be changed. I want disciples even while I'm in high school. Yeah, give me my mountain. That's what God wants of us. Some of us, we became cool when we were 22. How do you become cool at 22? 
How do you start dying before you've started living? You can't do that. Shout out, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. Yeah. Yeah. What mountains are you trusting God for in this season? What are those promises of God that you are taking? Yeah. You know, God's blessings are too big to fit in your pocket. Don't just pray for small things that will make you happy. What are you praying for? What are you praying for? Even the mountain of your children, pray that, are you praying for their salvation? Your siblings, that's a small mountain. At least you can start with a hill. God, give me a hill. At least I practice. Don't just, your prayer request cannot just be about you all the time. You need to want your mountain. And by the way, let me tell you this. The people who are desperate for anointing are the people who have a big mountain to climb. Yeah. Those are the people who look for God. They're the ones who wake up early to seek anointing because they know unless the Lord anoints me, the things he has called me to are too big for myself. Yeah. There are people who struggle waking up. I say, it's because your mountain is too small. Yeah. Ah, it's true. It's true. If you are struggling to wake up for 30 prayers, it's because you have no mountain to climb. You have already arrived. You have already received all the blessings you need. Yeah. The minute you understand how big your mountain is, yeah, yeah. The minute you understand how big it is. You know, by the time Lynn has planted Scotland and already started planting churches across Europe, what? She needs to pray. Those demons are huge. The demons in Europe are massive, by the way. Ugly, dark demons. They're going to need somebody who understands how to take mountains and understands how to pray and raise up prayer altars. That person cannot be a sleepyhead. They can't. If you're a sleepyhead, it's because your mountain is too small. Tell your neighbor, it's because your mountain is too small. So today I want us to ask God for mountains. And listen, here's what I want to say. When we are praying for anointing, unless your mountains are big enough, you will ask God for anointing in an academic way. You'll be like, Lord, I want anointing. It's a cool thing to have. It will make me powerful. Powerful for what? Yeah. Huh? It's, 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 it's power, anointing power, giving power. No, 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 no. You need anointing, my friend. Tell your friend, you need anointing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, that's, why, that's why you're struggling to come for a gathering, because you don't, you don't need anointing. Let me tell you, when you need anointing, you're going to, you're going to do whatever it takes to get it. You will be where anointing is. You will fight for it. You will fight for your possession. And you will not quit. My goodness. I see many of you scaling big mountains. Yeah. I see you having sons and daughters across the nations. Yeah. Yeah. Mavuno Diani, I see churches planted across the whole of that coastline. Yeah. I see you expanding. I see the smallest one of you putting a thousand to flight. I see the weakest person in your discipleship group becoming a mighty warrior for Jesus. Yeah. I see people looking at you and saying, there goes a man of God, there goes a woman of God. Yeah. I see you waking up for prayer with no shame. In fact, I see you being known in the place of prayer as there goes a prayer warrior. Yeah. Yeah. I see hungry people saying, God, give me my mountain. I see them in the house. They're rising up. There's an army that God is raising up in this house. An army that will not stop until they've achieved what God created them for. Let me tell you, too many Christians are comfortable to grow old in church. Sitting in the same chair. Until people know that's Muse So and So's chair. Don't sit there. He's been sitting there since he was 25. Huh? He's the chairman. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, are you a chairman? <laughs> Listen, I don't want you in that chair. That chair you're sitting on is for somebody who needs to come from the, from the outside and come and know the Lord. Through you. So that when those chairs are filled, you can go and start your own church. Yeah, every one of you. You can't, and even maybe you stay home and watch on TV because you want people to fill the church and start a church in your own house. That's what God wants. We don't measure the size of Mavuno by its sitting capacity. We measure it by its sending capacity. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the, the reason for the anointing is the assignment. Yeah, because I know today if I say, who wants anointing? Everybody will run on stage. But that's not what it is. It's not for you to be happy with. It's for the world to be changed. Because people are dying out there. God wants people to be changed. Who will save them? Your family will not be saved by some preacher on TV. You are the preacher on TV who will save them. It's you who's going to save them. You must equip yourself. When you come for gathering, you understand this message is for me to understand so I can teach it to others. And by the way, I want to challenge every one of you. Take one of these messages and teach it to somebody else. Teach it to your discipleship group. Teach it to an office, in a, a, a church group. Teach it to some friends. Teach it somewhere. Gather some teenagers from your neighborhood and teach them. Tell them why they need the anointing. Yeah, just, just take it and start teaching. The anointing is not given to you to make you fat. No. No. It's not. It's not. Somebody say, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. Yeah. By the way, I want Mavuno Church to bother God. I want us to disturb God. This summing season, I want us to bother heaven until God says, I, I just have to release that anointing. People are so hungry for me in that church. That miracles will just start happening on your Zoom call. Like the leader will just be saying, uh, in our church we do ask somebody saying, I've been healed. Because of the power of God that comes from hungry, expectant hearts that are saying, God, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. Ah, listen, I pray that you will not struggle with fasting. By the way, the reason people struggle with fasting is because they're, they're climbing a little molehill. It's not even a hill. It's like a little, it's a bump. Your mountain is a bump. That's why you're struggling with food, because your mountain is a bump. If you're climbing a bump, you don't even need energy for it. The minute God gives you mountain and starts showing you mountain, tell my friend, you will fast. Even liquid fast, you will fast. Yeah, you will fast it. Because you understand you are created for more. God's people, I want you to all have a holy discontent. Refuse to settle for less. Refuse it. Let me tell you guys, at Bellevue, when all those lines of cars were leaving the church, and this church was the most famous church in the country, and everybody thought I was the most successful pastor, I was looking at that thing and crying, and telling God, there has to be more. There has to be more. You call me to make disciples of nations? This is not it. Teaching guys every Sunday and, and, and having guys really blessed and entertained, I looked at it and I thought, that's what we're doing at this point. Yes, their lives were changed, but they're happy to sit here and be changed forever. They didn't even want to go anywhere because they weren't disciples. At that point, I didn't even know what I wanted, but I was like, God, there has to be more. There has to be more, Lord. There has to be more. I want more of you, Lord. I want more of your kingdom results. I want to see God doing things. And you know, there are some people who've criticized me and said, Moravi, you're just looking for a big church. It's because you want to be famous. You just want a, a big church. You want to measure the church by the numbers. I said, there's a whole book in the Bible called Numbers. God loves numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I want numbers. I want numbers because I want impact. Yeah. You should also want numbers. Don't criticize. Don't get annoyed. Get anointed. Yeah. Get anointed. Get anointed. And so today as we pray for anointing, hey, I want to pray for anointing for desperate people. People who are hungry for God. People who want everything it takes for them to fulfill their purpose. By the way, if you're not hungry for God, it's okay. Don't, don't receive anointing today. Anointing destroys people with no purpose. Yeah. Samson got anointing, but he had no purpose. He started chasing women with the anointing. So don't even ask for it if you don't have a purpose for it. But I want you to ask God for a mountain. And the first thing I believe is that right now there are people who God has already shown mountains that are big, and maybe you've even been afraid because the mountain is so big. God has already shown you kingdom vision and you've not even known how it will ever happen. And as a result, you've been paralyzed. You've not even taken those first steps or you've not known how to take the first steps. But I believe that the Lord in this house is here to give a spirit of boldness and release to sons and daughters who are ready for it. And so if this is you, I want to pray for you right now. By the way, some of you, God has called you to international ministries. Yeah. 
He's called you to them. Not glamorous, tough ministries. Places where their giants dwell. But you've said, God, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. And I believe that some of you will plant churches in difficult places. Yeah, some of you will plant ministries in difficult places. Because the Lord is with you. Listen, you go to easy places because you're going with your strength. But when the Lord is with you, you go up the mountain. Yeah, you're saying, God, give me my mountain. Listen, I'm not even going to ask you to come in front. I believe that the anointing is in this house. Let me invite the exec team to come up on stage. Let me announce, uh, 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 yeah, please, First Family, just come up. Let's appreciate them as they come. I want them to just lead, join us as we trust God for impartation, for blessing, for release of His grace. Yeah, yeah, you can give them some mics. Just share, let them share. Yeah. Come on, give me my mountain. I love it, I love it. Sing in the mic, my friend. Give me my mountain. Lord, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. Give me my mountain today. Give me my mountain, Lord. Give me my mountain. 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 Somebody just begin to pray right now. Raise up your voice. Begin to say, God, give me my mountain. Though some of you even know where that mountain is, begin to say, God, give me this place. Some of you, God showed you a nation. And you're saying, God, give me this nation. Some of you, God has shown you Japan. He's shown you Somalia. He's shown you what it is. Say, God, give me this mountain. I want to glorify you. Lord, you've shown me that I will look after orphans. I want to have a big ministry to orphans. Give me my mountain. Lord, you've shown me I will look after young girls. Give me my, my mountain. Lord, you've shown me I will look after widows. Give me my mountain. Come on, the power of God is in this place. As you release, as you release a prayer to heaven, Lord, thank you that right now you're releasing your blessing upon your people. As they're crying out and saying, God, give me my mountain. I'm desperate for my mountain. I want my mountain. I will not settle for less. Lord, I want it with everything in my heart. I want it more than a promotion at work. I want it more than money. I want my mountain. Oh God, come on, call out to God. Lord, we want our mountain. We want our mountain. Lord, show somebody right now. Reveal, reveal the mountains in this house right now. Open the eyes of your people. Let them begin to see. Let them begin to receive. Lord, reveal yourself right now. Begin to reveal right now. There's somebody, your spiritual eyes are being opened right now. God is giving you an impression. He's showing you a mountain. He's showing you something that he's been nudging you about. He's showing you the shape it will take. Just say, God, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain, Lord. Lord, I receive my mountain. I will not settle for less. I want this mountain. I want this mountain. I want this mountain. Lord, show me the mountain. Show me what it is, Lord. Reveal. Some of you are in a workplace right now. Maybe you can't think of a mountain. But God has planted you in a place right now. You can begin to say, God, give me my workplace. Give me my office. Give me that place, Lord. I want to be a principality in that place. I want to affect the spiritual environment of that corporation. I want everybody in that NGO to know you while I'm there. Some of you are students in schools. Begin to pray for your school. Say, give me that school. By the time I'm graduating from Form 4, I want people to know you in this place, Lord. Give me my mountain, Lord. I don't just want to be a regular student. I want my school. Give me my mountain. Some of you have extended families that are bound by witchcraft. That's a good mountain to start praying for. Say, God, give me my mountain. My family will be saved because of me. Use me to bring them to you. Show me how I can even start after this. Show me 
because Lord I want to bring them to you use me maybe you've been praying for God to save them stop praying for them for God pray that you will save them that God will give you that mountain that you will take down you will take down the giants that have been troubling your family say God give me your mountain give me that mountain give me that mountain Lord give me that mountain Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. That Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Mountain. Equip me, anoint me. Mountain. Let me invite Pastor Godwin up. Can we just appreciate Pastor Godwin? This is one of the boldest men I know. He's a bold man. <laughs> He's young, but sometimes it's good to be young. Because you don't know what you can't do. You know, old people, sometimes we get to a place where we know ourselves too much. And we've, we know where we failed. I love this man because he's decided to just be bold for the Lord. I want you to release an anointing of boldness right. upon the people who are asking for a mountain. Yes. Just pray that God would give them a reckless boldness of knowing who their father is. Right. When you know who your father is, you're not worried. You just step out in authority. So just release that blessing upon God's people. All right. And even as we pray, I'm reminded even as you're uh, charging Pastor Lynn to plant in Scotland, that there was a general who actually said, give me Scotland or I die. Yeah. Yep. It yep. has to yep. get to that point of desperation. Today, that mountain, I want you to bring it up to the Lord and say, give me this mountain or I die. Uh, you know, the alternative is death. <laughs> give me this mountain today. And I thank you, Father, because, Lord, you've given us your Holy Spirit who confirms with our spirits that we are children of God. Thank you because you tell us in John 1, 12 that for those who believed, you gave them the right to be Become called children. sons of God. Yeah. And I thank you because, Lord, in Psalms chapter 2, you tell us, today you are my son, today I have begotten you. I want you to open your mouth and say, today, Lord, today, I am Lord. covenanting with you afresh yes, as Lord. your son or covenant as your daughter. You, and because yes, of that Lord. sonship, Lord, I approach your throne of grace, knowing, oh Jesus, God, that there is inheritance that is kept for me, your yes. son or your daughter. Yes. And I come with that boldness, oh God, asking for my mountain. Yes. Today, Father, I pray that anywhere where the enemy has planted the spirit of fear, that, Lord, you will replace that spirit with a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Yes. That as I take on the mountains, Father, that you've placed before me, that as you've given me these mountains for my inheritance, Lord, I will take them with the anointing that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, Father, I will approach these mountains with a sound mind. Yes. Lord, Father, that I'll approach these mountains with love in the name of Jesus. Father, today I pray that you release an unction, the anointing for boldness. Yes. Father, there are young men and women here, oh God, that are doubting themselves and self-sabotaging their ministries. Today, Lord, I pray that that becomes the end of the story. Yes. That today, Lord, you are turning around their destinies yes. and they are walking out of this dome as kingdom generals yes, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Father, I declare today that anyone who walked in here with low self-esteem will walk out with their head, heads held high and they'll be ready for their special assignments yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, there are those who walked in, oh God, they are even doubting their call, oh Father. I pray that you assure them that they are disciples that you love. They are your children. They are your sons and daughters. And Father, inheritance is given for children. So yes. may they walk out with the boldness that I have interacted you, with Abba Father. Father, there are those who look down on themselves because they are asking, Father, I just have a small DG. Maybe it's five people. Maybe it's seven people. But I pray, Father, that you turn that discipleship group into a kingdom movement in the name of Jesus. So I release the spirit of boldness upon your children. That whatever the small beginnings they are interacting with now, that Lord, you are turning it into mountains. You are turning, oh God, their small stories into kingdom business. You are turning their small beginnings into mighty kingdom stories in the name of Jesus. So Heavenly Father, I speak specifically upon anyone here who still has selective disobedience. 
Yeah. Father, that as you've spoken your word and as you've spoken through your prophet today, I pray, Father, that be there any selective disobedience deal, that you deal with it yourself. Yes. There are so many people that were peers with Caleb that did not inherit. They are those that fell along the way. They are the ten that fell along the way and gave the bad report. I speak upon every son and daughter in this house that their story will be different. Yes. They will not have selective disobedience or delayed disobedience. They will not have selective obedience, which is disobedience. Father, I pray that every son and daughter in this house will not just be a son and daughter by name, but by deed. Yes. And by so doing, Father, they will inherit the mountains that you are giving them. Yes. Father, I recognize that these mountains also have giants. I recognize, oh God, that there are giants that are in these mountains that have to be dispossessed. I pray for the spirit, oh God, the spirit of the God of angel armies to be upon your children, to empower them from without Thank and you, empower them from within to be able to take on these giants. Yes. As we've been encouraged, oh God, that the giants are so big that we cannot miss them. Today, I pray, Father, that we will arm ourselves, that you will train our hands for war and our fingers for battle so that we arm ourselves like David stepping out to slay our giants yes father i pray that that boldness will be in effect effective today yeah some of these sons and daughters of yours oh god are going to step into the matatus their means of transport uh -huh. they are going to go into their neighborhoods and immediately start the work of dispossessing enemies in their mountains in Jesus name. Some of them are going back to their families and you're giving them the boldness to evangelize even to their parents. Yeah. You're giving them the boldness to evangelize to their siblings. Yeah. You're giving them the boldness to re-strategize their relationships and introduce Jesus in there. Yeah. Father, I realize that taking on the mountains means taking the first step. I pray, Father, that as we hike up the mountains, we will take the first step. Yes. We will not be afraid to mount this mountain, to go up these mountains, but we will be bold. We will be fearless because we are Mavuno Church and we are known for being the fearless influencers of society. Yes. For this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and God's children say it together. Woo! I'm taking my mountain. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Wow. To receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive boldness. Amen. I just sense that as he prayed, that some of you are going to become a reference point to your family this year. Yeah. People in your extended family older than you are going to start asking for your advice. And you'll be amazed at how God just turns things around because of the spirit of boldness in your life. Thank you, Pastor Godwin, Pastor Noel, the bold couple. We bless God for you. Let me invite the Kilonzis to come up. <laughs> yeah. The Lord will lead you who will pray. I can see you're not sure. But you both have this. I want you to release the impartation of teaching. Teaching is one of the most powerful things. I've come to understand most Christians don't understand how powerful teaching is. Yeah. No wonder it's in the Great Commission. Make disciples of all nations, and it explains what that means. Teaching them to obey. And you know, some of you, for these mountains, you're going to have to become great teachers. Yeah, you're going to have to learn to teach people. It's teaching that changes people, by the way. You look at people, you're scared of them. Teaching changes them. I told you, when the Lord asked me to start gathering people in gatherings, I thought they'll kill me. But through teaching, look at you. Tell your neighbor, look at you now. You're a product of teaching. Yeah. So the anointing I want them to release on us is the anointing of teaching, the boldness of teaching, that God will give you an anointed tongue and you will know how to teach people until their lives are changed around. So, team, Wow. Uh, so, Heavenly Father, uh, Heavenly Father, you who sent your son, and for those who couldn't distinguish his God side, the word, the name they called him was teacher. Yeah. Because he taught. 
And so those who couldn't even understand him as Lord still called him teacher. Yeah. And now I pray that your anointing that is able to give an instructed tongue and is able to give the eyes of understanding that you may know, understand, and then instruct. I pray that same spirit that was on Christ. And who, when Christ was living, said, I'm going to send you another helper who will teach you and remind you that one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is teaching and reminding. Now, mighty Jehovah, just like you've allowed Pastor Faith and I to walk in that grace, that has been exercised in different ways and in different places and in different seasons. Now we release the blessing and the anointing of teaching. Yes, Lord. That people will gather people somewhere and in an instant they'll know their meal that they need to serve. Yes. But the grace of teaching comes also from the grace of being a receiver. So they'll also sit under instruction so that the student can be taught. Then they can rise up and teach as well. So I pray that as people live here, that those who convert this grace of teaching, even as we've been told that you can desire the gift, it is not my primary gift, I have to confess. It, is as, it has been for the longest time a desired gift and Amen. watched many teachers and desired to teach like many people that you know that Pastor Faith knows like the journeys have gone through until at some point people saying, say, started saying you teach well. Lord, I want to pray that people now here will download Pastor M's podcast and they'll start learning because you cannot teach that which you don't have. Yeah. So allow us to be people who soak in. But as we are taught, and many times the Holy Spirit is teaching us, not in a, an amorphous way, but by listening to our own teachers, the Holy Spirit is teaching. Yeah. You have said in your word that your children will be taught of the Lord. But then you use human people to speak but the understanding is at a spiritual level. Yeah. So we release the grace of being able to hear, to know, to retain information, and to dispense it at any time that is needed. Yes. One of the things that when you become a teacher that happens is that sometimes you remember things. Yeah. You remember things, but you also have to know how to connect them at the moment. Yeah. So Lord, now we release that gift. We release that grace. We release that anointed mighty Jehovah of being able to teach, but you also release it to the gift of understanding, that they'll be able to understand seasons and be able to know what word is applied for that moment. Oh Lord, give that to your children. Open up their minds, open up their hearts, open up their, uh, uh, their, their capacity to have. So just like someone who understands the Old Testament and the New Testament, they can be like a scribe where you can go and get the fullness of God's word mm. and how it applies in our moment today. Yeah. Let me ask you, Pastor Faith, to close. Mm. And Lord, I pray for a love for your word yeah. to people. We've been encouraged year after year to go through the New Testament. I pray that we will be found in your word. Mm. And not going through it so that we tick a box. But Lord, we will spend time in it, allow it to come into us. And know we can never read your word and remain the same. I pray that as we go through your word, your word will go in us and transform us from the inside out. That people will be able to say, these people were with Jesus, the Jesus of the word. That people will be able to say, this is the man of the word. Because the values and the character of Jesus is coming out through us. And so Lord, I speak against anything that is standing in the way of anyone here. Uh, 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 receiving your word or reading your word. It could be, Lord, it's hardness of the heart. In the parable of the seeds of the sower, there were different kinds of soil. Maybe for some of us, it's just hardness, like the word can't penetrate because we have hardness of heart. It could be sin, things we've learned even in, in this gathering. It could be uh, uh, offense. Lord, whatever is standing in the way of us receiving your word, Lord, we pray that even now you will remove it. For some of us, it could be even a demonic thing where to the enemy comes in. When we want to read the word, we feel sleepy. When we want to read the word, we struggle with it. I pray, Lord, there will be a freeness to, uh, to, to study your word. I pray for those ones who are distracted. Your word also says there was a seed that was planted, but there was distraction. It could be we are chasing after things. It could be we are distracted with even good things, as Pastor M tells us, children or, or family. But Lord, I pray that we will set aside time 
special time to connect with you in reading your word. And Lord, as we read your word, your word promises that we will bear fruit. I pray that, Lord, your children will bear fruit as a result of being in the word and receiving your word. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So if you're a DG leader, go, don't just lead a discipleship group. Go and teach. Yeah. If you're an MC leader, before the end of this month or be, between, within a month, call your, all your DG leaders and teach them something. Even if they are two DG leaders, call them and teach. If you're an, a zone or pastor, call your MC leaders, maybe even the DG leaders, and teach them. If you're a campus pastor, call people somewhere, say it's going to be whatever number of hours, and teach them. If you're a, oh, the, the rest of us are doing it. <laughs> the campus pastors are already teaching every Sunday, but start somewhere. And then, because if you're faithful with little, then the space expands like that. Amen. So. Amen. Amen. You know, as, as they were praying, God just reminded me that yesterday he unlocked someone's mind and dropped code. I believe the Lord is going to just begin to drop code from his word as you read it. And he will give you the ability to actually translate his word and make it real for other people. The gift of teaching is a powerful gift. It's, a, it's one of the most powerful gifts in the church. And I'm really excited that God's people are receiving it. Amen. Oh, come on. I look at the pastors in this house. There are so many. God is blessing his sons and daughters. Amen. I'd like Pastor Victor to come up. Come on, Pastor Vic. <laughs> yeah. This man, eh, this man has a pastor's heart. <laughs> he loves people. And he just has, he just has a way of... I don't know. I, mean, I can't do what he does, by the way. He really has a great pastoral heart. Huh? And he's a shepherd. He's a great shepherd. Yeah. I just want you to pray that God will give us, will break our hearts with the things that break his heart. And that we'll see people not as tools to be used, but as God's children to love. That we will expend ourselves on behalf of those God has given us. You know, you can be a pastor and you use people. You can be a digital leader and you're using people to grow. I want you guys to multiply so I can become big. But that's not the heart God wants us to have. He wants us to love people. And let me tell you guys, I pray for my heart because I know my heart can be hard. I pray, God, give me love. Even before I stood up today, I'm like, God, give me love for your people because without love, I'm nothing. So Pastor Vic, just release the gift of pastor, of shepherd upon God's people. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you and we bless you this wonderful afternoon, oh God. We are reminded in scripture when you look at your people and you are filled with so much compassion, you're filled with so much brokenness because you looked at your people and said, oh God, they are like sheep without a shepherd. Yeah. And I pray this wonderful afternoon that you may get to seek in the hearts of each and every one of us who's gathered here in this gathering to receive the impartation that we have through this weekend, O oh Jehovah God. I thank you for that which I have not, but through the enablers of the Holy Spirit you have given into my heart. Yeah. And I pray the same to your children, O oh God. Come I on. pray that you may fill us by the love of the Holy Spirit, that you may be able to pass it over to the people, to the men and women and children that you have given to us, O oh God. Yes, Lord. In every space of discipleship, I pray that you may be filled with compassion and with your love so yeah. that you may embrace each and every person within our, 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 our circles, Jehovah God. Come on. And we thank you because of the one thing that you say to us as your children, that our work is to know you so that you may make others people know you as well. Yeah. And Father, through that heart, O oh Jehovah God, of shepherding, may we reach far and wide for the glory and honor of your name, O oh God. Yes. I pray for any person who might have been broken through this journey. And I say, may you be healed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I pray that with each and every person who's desiring, O oh God, to walk to disciple and is being disciples so that you may disciple others, O oh God, that one of the biggest things that you need to have is a heart of understanding. Yes. Is a heart of compassion. Is a heart of opening up your heart. And that I release this wonderful afternoon in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we thank you for the goodness that we have seen. We thank you for the growth that we have seen. 
We thank you for the multiplication that we continue to see yes. and to receive through the power of your Holy Spirit. Yeah. And right now I say the things that we feel we have not, oh God, because we receive from your Holy Spirit. May we walk with that boldness. May we walk with that goodness. May we walk, Jehovah God, knowing that this that you gave to us is the best and the tool that we have and that you are going to change the hearts of the many who are out there. Yes, sir. So we thank you this wonderful afternoon and even as we receive from you because you have prayed that believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. By the way, offices are about to change. Businesses are about to change. The boss mentality has left this room. Yeah, you're going to look at your employees as your, your sheep. The people God has given you to look after and love. And you're going to raise up sons and daughters, even in your office. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you see those companies? Wow, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Let me invite Pastor James to come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you. <laughs> Amen. He has an army. You, you can tell the man has an army in the house. <laughs> wow. Today I want you to receive all the gifts in this house. Yeah, I want you to receive everything. Nothing withheld. There's this man who has... The Lord has anointed him for prayer. The Lord has anointed him for intercession. The Lord has given him a hunger to hold on to the hem of Jesus' garment. Man, I don't know a pastor who prays like this man. He prays for his people. And God has just broken his heart for prayer. I don't think that's who he used to be. I didn't know him as that. But it's an anointing that God has just poured into his life in these days that has become a blessing to this church. And I believe that God is going to need... You're, for those mountains, you're going to need a serious spirit of prayer. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you do the one hour when we do the 4.30, but after that, you're like, you struggle. But you know what? I believe God wants to give you a freedom for prayer. He wants to give you a hunger for prayer that you will just find yourself praying and you will find it happening effectively. So I want to ask Pasi, would you just release an anointing for intercession upon God's people? Anybody ready for that anointing? Amen. Amen. Our God and our King, we thank you because you love us. We thank you because you created us for an assignment and you desire to anoint us for the assignment. And so I release a grace for prayer over your sons and daughters. Yeah. I release an uncommon anointing for prayer. Yes. I speak over you the capacity <laughs> to transact Thank in the Lord. spirit and to Thank obtain Lord. victory in many situations in yes. Jesus' name. I speak over you that you will take territory through prayer. Yes, that there are places where you will be able to intervene and the fire of God will go ahead of you as you pray Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare a fresh anointing. Thank I speak you. over you a hunger and a thirst for Thank God that you. cannot be quenched in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare that for some of you, you're going to start to find that you cannot rest without seeking God passionately and diligently. Yes. This is your portion today. This is your portion today. Listen, God has made it possible for me to obtain victory in unusual ways just through prayer and this is the grace that i release upon you god's people yes, so. because i understand that the graces god gives us is not for us to look or be like superstars it is for the for the sake of his children yes. and i declare that this is your portion in jesus name uh, i have a i have a word that i believe is for us i i mentioned it in morning prayers first time and i got this word a couple of weeks ago and I think I shared it, I've shared it with some of the Hill City people. We had a Mizizi retreat some time back. There are things that need to happen and God wants to accomplish in us and through us as a movement. And when they happen, you'll think it's because Pastor M is so anointed and he is. Pastor Milton is so anointed and he is. But what God is looking to do, it's actually the anointing he wants to give you that will be causing those things to happen. There are times when God will lead you to pray for people you do not know and have never interacted with. And you will be able, we've used Pastor Lynn Wells a bit as an illustration today, so allow me to use her. You, you will be the one through a prophetic grace that God uses to speak to someone like Pastor Lynn and say, oh, when you go to Edinburgh, God, is, God has raised a man of peace and this is his name or this is her name. Do you understand? 
so that then it is your grace. You may never see Edinburgh yourself, praise the Lord, but it is the grace that God is releasing in you that will be unlocking doors and establishing breakthrough because of that grace. For some of you, it's a prophetic grace. For some of you, it is this grace for intercession. That there are churches that will be birthed that you may never visit, but they will be birthed because of your determination to contend in the spirit for, a, for the establishment of the will of God. We said that spiritual warfare is an aggressive pursuit of the will of God. That some of you, there are people who the enemy has determined they will die, but they will live because of you and because of the grace that God is imparting upon you. That there are places you will stand and say, not on my watch. And because of your word, the enemy will be defeated in Jesus' name. My God and my King, I declare that it is done today. I thank you because you have released this blessing upon your children. I thank you for interruptions in our prayer life. That we will be waking up thinking, I'm waking up because I'm desperate in my business. And so I'm waking up to pray for breakthrough. But we will wake up and pray for a campus that's not even in our network. And we will not know why. We will find ourselves contending for a campus pastor or for a, an associate we know or a DG leader who's not even our leader and does not even know us well. But because Holy Spirit of God, you will have stirred in us a grace and a capacity for intercession and we have the instruments that you will use for the establishment of your will. I thank you because there are church planters who will go out and find an easy path ahead of them and it is because men and women here that your anointing for intercession will have gone ahead of them in prayer and will be the channels through whom you will establish the promise that you gave Israel that behold I send my hornet ahead of you my angels of war that we will be those men and women who are the manifestation of that declaration to the glory and to the honor of your name and so I release every grace I release upon you an unusual and an uncommon grace for prayer and, a, and an unusual capacity for effectiveness in spiritual warfare. I speak it over you who are in the room. I speak it over you watching online in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo! <laughs> By the way, as, as prayer goes out, I just sense for some of you, God is even confirming it. Yeah, I just sense God's power is in the room and some people are just, you're feeling weak, you just feel something happening, a dizziness or a physical symptom, don't worry, the devil is not operating in this space. Yeah, yeah, he's not operating in this space, not in this space, he's not here. So whatever you feel, relax, just say, Lord, I receive. Yeah, just say, Lord, I receive, it's okay, it's going to happen. Some of those things that you see is a manifestation that God has actually answered the prayer that was prayed. So just relax and receive it. Bless the Lord. By the way, I really sense the, the intercession power right now, just going out to different people, even as we prayed. Let me invite uh, Pastor Milton and Vivian to come up. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, let's just face it. Huh? The places you're going to go, you will face opposition. You will. These are not, we're not, mountains are not places of relaxation. He wasn't saying, give me the mountain resort. <laughs> he was saying, give me the mountain where the enemies are. Yeah. And what you're asking when you ask for a mountain is a dangerous thing. Because you're asking for the place where you want to dethrone and dispossess the enemy. But the reason you can do it is because you know God promised it. He's called you to it. You don't have to fear. But the gift I would love for you to receive as you do that, is a gift of miracle signs and wonders. Yeah? Amen. I believe that God would want you to have the ability to pray for people and they'll be healed. Some of you already have received this gift. So I believe the impartation today is just to affirm you, to fire, put on fire what God has already put in you, so that you can start to fan into flame. Because we can't keep praying for you every time and then till the next gathering. You've done nothing with the gift. So you need to receive the gift like the Kelonzis were saying and then practice it as it has come. And you know sometimes you pray and nothing happened. That's okay. So you prayed. You established the will of God in that person's life. Yeah, God will heal the person. Just have faith. Believe that you've prayed and God has acted. Your job is not to heal. Your job is to pronounce healing. Yeah, then the Holy Spirit is the one who heals. And you know as you begin to practice, you get better at it. It, this, these things happen with practice. Sometimes you pray and something happened, 
that's okay. Don't be afraid. Lord, what if I pray and nothing happens? Be a prayer supplier anyway. And you know what? God begins to build you up in your faith. Even as you start, he'll start to show you results as you do this. But I want to ask you to receive now a gift of just miraculous power, authority to confront the enemy like Jesus did, to deliver people from the works of the devil. Thank you, Pastor M. Thank you, Pastor M, for the opportunity to pray. Allow me to ask my wife Vivian to read a portion of scripture and then uh, we will pray. It comes from Matthew 9. Uh, she'll start reading from uh, verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. Amen. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Amen. Matthew 10, 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Thank you, Jesus. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother James, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. Thank you for the reading of the word. Thank you, Vivian. I think one of the things as we get to this place of prayer is the understanding that this Jesus who went around doing good, uh, these are some of the things he was doing. I bless God that today our prophet has allowed us to pray for boldness because for you to practice walking in miracle signs and wonders, you need boldness. You need to have faith. Um, for you to be able to walk to bring freedom to people, you need to know how to teach. For you to be able to connect with people well from where they are, you need to care. And finally, you need to just be at the place where you can intercede in prayer. So for us, it's just to pray that one, you will go out yeah. to your mountain. Come on. Because Jesus went through the towns and the villages. So the mountain won't come to you. You will go for your mountain. Yeah. Can I hear goers in this place? Amen. Can, are there goers in this place? Yeah. And then it says, teaching in their synagogues. Whenever you read about Jesus healing, he taught first. Yeah. Are we together? He did. Remember, when you know the truth, the truth sets you, sets free, you free, isn't it? So even the freedom had come through the teaching. So our prayer is that because you've received the anointing of teaching, then you will teach. And yeah. then listen, guys. He actually healed every disease and sickness. Come on. Because these people were harassed and helpless. helpless like sheep, sheep without, a without a shepherd. But now they'll have a shepherd because you've received the anointing of shepherdhood uh, this evening, isn't it? And then, when you go now to verse, oh, before you cross, he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the, the laborers, laborers are... Here. Can I see a laborer? Can I see the witness of a laborer? Yeah. Can I see the witness of a laborer? Come on. You see, the minute you've said, Jesus, you are Lord, you've become a laborer. Yeah. The minute you've said, Jesus, you are my king, then it means he has actually gotten part of his nobility in you. Now... It goes on now to say that Jesus called his, how many are we today? About 600? His 600 disciples, 900. Yeah. Oh my goodness. 
900 disciples in Mavuno Church this afternoon. Come on. And others are online, following online. He called them and listen, listen, listen. He gave them authority. Yeah. He gave them authority. Whose authority is it? Yes. Whose authority? Jesus. And who has he given it? Disciples. He's given it to you, isn't it? Can I hear he's given it to me? He's given it to me. He's given me the authority. He's given me the authority. I have the authority. I have the authority. To do what? To heal. drive out impure spirits yeah. and to heal oh, every man, disease and sickness. Come on. So, you are going to receive that authority right now. In Jesus Some name. of you have received before. It's going to be renewed. If it is an altar, sometimes it is serviced, isn't it? You are going to service the altar of your heart today. If you hear someone scream, just understand as Pastor M said. The devil is not the here. The devil is not here. Yeah. Are we no. together? If you feel pressure on you, do you remember the pressure in the Formula One car? When the glory of God comes upon you and you start feeling some weight, please do not be afraid. It is that force that is coming on you. And it is coming on you so that you get your salach to go out there and lay hands on people and they will be healed. So put your hands before you and just make this your prayer. Because remember Acts 1.8 says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So that what happens? You will be his witness. There is power, power, wonder working power in the life. upon your people this evening that Lord God your glory would come upon them right now in the name of Jesus father release your glory release your power release your presence release your might oh God upon this oh God father may your spirit say of these ones each and every one of them a body have I found for myself that I may do your will father your will of healing the sick your will oh God of bringing Lord God our people to deliver us to freedom for it is for freedom that Jesus you set us free oh God I pray miracles signs and wonders would follow and pursue and overtake them that people will know there is still God in Zion Father God this evening we pray that your mighty power would come upon your people right now Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Descend upon your people right now. 
So begin breathing in and out more deeper than normal. Begin breathing in and out more deeper than normal. Receive his breath. Receive his breath. Receive his breath right now. Oh, receive his breath. Like a rushing wind, it could come through your nostrils. Like a wind, it could come through your mouth. But just open up yourselves and receive the Spirit of God. Receive the breath of God. Receive the breath of God. For some of us, you start feeling a tingling on your hand. Some of us, you start feeling a heaviness on your hand. For some of us, it could be sharp pain in your hand or a part of your body. And if you feel pain at any part of your body, you know like doctors, you have a specialist for the abdomen or for the chest or for the whatever. That area where you'll feel the most pain is the place where you'll have the most grace in that area of healing. So right now, just begin receiving. Receiving that power. Receive that power. Receive that authority. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Rest upon your people now. Yes, Lord. Rest upon your people. I just sense God saying that because he sat you with Jesus Christ above powers, above rulers, above darkness, about, above strongholds, above arguments, above any name, I want you to receive authority to operate over spiritual realms. Yeah. Receive authority to operate over spiritual realms. That as Paul writes in Ephesians, that the manifest wisdom of God will be seen through you, the yeah. church. Oh, receive that authority. Yes. Receive that authority. Do not be afraid. Receive that authority. Receive that authority. Thank receive you, that authority. Receive that authority wherever you are. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. Receive it now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. There is a fresh wind coming your way. There is a fresh breeze coming your way. There is a fresh breeze coming your way. Receive the Spirit of God. Yes, Receive the Spirit of God. Receive the Spirit of God. Receive Him. Do not resist Him. Receive Him. Receive Him. It's not a need. It's a person. It's a personality. Receive Him right now. Receive Him now, right now. If you've received the ability to speak in tongues, just begin speaking in the Spirit. Begin talking in the Spirit. Begin speaking that tongue. Begin talking that tongue. Begin speaking it out. Begin speaking it out. Do not resist it. Just talk, 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 talk. Talk wherever you are. Talk wherever you are. I know it's coming to several of us. Talk wherever you are. Reopen up. Open up yourselves. Open up yourselves. Receive it now. Receive him. Receive him. Receive the ability. Receive the ability. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. It is okay. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Do not resist. Do not resist. Do not resist. Do not resist. Receive. Receive. A distinction is coming. A distinction is coming. A separation is coming. A separation is coming. A separation is coming. A separation is coming your way. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. And some of you are receiving healing. You are receiving healing for a disease, for a condition, for an infection, for a challenge that is physical. You are receiving healing right now. It is okay. It is okay. The Lord is at work within you right now. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, receive him. Oh, receive. A fresh wind is coming. A fresh anointing is coming. A fresh wind is coming your way. Thank you, Lord. 
I just sense, Pastor M, that um, the going out to the nations needs to be ascending by you. Um, receive your commissioning to use that gift. You see, when you have an anointing, you don't operate the anointing separate. You don't yeah. operate the anointing yeah. separate to the house you've gotten the anointing for. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Otherwise you become a, a Vashti who's hosting a party with other women in the king's house. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. The Lord requires you to submit that gift to the kingdom, yes, but to the house that you're operating in. Amen. So right now, receive the blessing to use that anointing that you have received today. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. If you notice, we want you to have all the gifts. There are going to be some gifts that are going to become more prominent in your life than others, and that's okay. But Jesus operated in all the gifts. He could teach. He could heal. Isn't it? He was bold. He had the authority to, to, to share the gospel. We want you to have all of them. He was a pastor who cared for people. He had compassion. We want you to have all of them because we believe that you need them to take down those mountains. Amen. Somebody say, give me my mountain. Yeah. This is what you need. You need the resources to take that mountain. Let me invite Pastor Carol to come up. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, we're coming to the end, guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, you will need teamwork. You will need teamwork. Tell your neighbor you need teamwork. What Pastor Milton said is so true. Some of these gifts are dangerous in isolation. There's nothing worse than an unrooted prophetic ministry. It becomes a fire that just burns everywhere, good and bad. Whenever you find a, and this is something I learned very early in ministry, if you find an effective, kingdom-centered, prophetic ministry, it's always sheltered under an apostolic ministry. It doesn't just operate loosely. We're just here to prophesy and to heal, and that's what we do. There's always a direction. And good prophets are always anchored under the apostle. Is that okay? By the way, leave my daughter there. She's fine. That's the anointing. It's not, I told you there's no devil in this house. If you see somebody crying, it's okay. The Lord showed me the devil is not operating in this place. He can't. He can't. He's tried, by the way. Eh? It's not that he didn't send agents for this weekend. He sent them. Cindy or Pastor Jacob? He sent them. But they couldn't even work. They arrived here and they were paralyzed before they could even move. The Lord showed me they can't operate in this space. Yeah, the anointing is too much. Holy Spirit is here. When His church is gathered like this, they cannot operate. So don't be afraid. If you're feeling weak, if you see somebody around you falling, that's okay. It is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, if somebody is on the ground, if someone says, just let them, let them relax in the power of the Holy Spirit. But I was talking about teamwork because all these gifts work together. You can't be a teacher who's an errant teacher. And that's why Pastor Kilonzi talked about the fact that as you're starting to practice your teaching, take the teaching of this house and teach it to others. Yeah. That's how you're going to hone your teaching gift. As you begin to have a prophetic ministry, ensure that prophetic ministry is sheltered under your campus pastor. Don't just be this loose prophet who goes around prophesying and looking for spiritual highs and experiences. Prophets can be weird people if they don't know how to shelter their prophecy under the shelter. You need to shelter that prophecy. It needs to be under. Because when it is, it will serve the nation. 
Yeah, it will serve the nation. So that's important. To do these things that God is calling you to do, you need the ability to have excellent teammates. People who are willing to die for your vision and to call it their own. So what I want to pray for you now is divine helpers. And the person I'm going to ask to pray is my divine helper. <laughs> yeah. But I need to also say this. I'm also her divine helper. Because she's not escorting me. We are escorting each other. Each of us has a calling in this ministry. Yeah. And that's something I want to say to spouses, people who are married here. There's no ministry of escorting. Ah, come on. There is no ministry of escorting. Don't say, my husband is called. But here, I am here to escort him. My wife is called. She's the one with the calling. I'm just here to escort. There is no ministry of escorting. You are there to help each other. We are each other's divine helper. Yeah. But I also want to pray, beyond spouses, I believe all of us need divine helpers. You cannot do the work of God without divine helpers. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Carol to release the grace for you that people who need to be attracted to you will be attracted to you. And that God will give you the helpers, plural, helpers, to achieve the ministry he's calling you to. Yeah, you're going to need those helpers. Pastor Janet, you'll need those helpers. Yeah. But hey, Pastor Janet, you're an apostolic leader. Yeah. You know, we see Pastor Janet as a children's pastor in this movement. But God has shown me different. You're an apostolic leader. You're a movement leader. Yeah. Yeah. God will use you to teach on, on huge platforms, astounding platforms that you will be amazed by. You'll wonder, how did I get to this place? God is going to provide a platform for you. Keep, just ask him for your mountain, but he will provide platforms for you. International, global platforms. Yeah, that's, your, that's, your, that's who you are. Me, I don't just see a children's pastor in you, and although a children's pastor is a powerful pastor already, but I see global ministry in you. So anyway, that's not what the Lord was telling me to say. I just saw you and the Lord reminded me something he told me about you. But just pray for divine helpers. All right, let's pray. Our Father, we are thankful for today. We are thankful uh, for even this moment that we have for impartation. And Father, even as we ask you for divine helpers, yeah. I want, first of all, each one of us to thank God for the people he has already sent. Yes. Some of them might not you, look Lord. like divine helpers, Jesus. but they are divine helpers. And we cannot ask when we have not yet given thanks for the ones who God has given us. Indeed, God calls us to be good stewards of the people who he has already sent our way. For some of us, I suspect we need to repent. Because the people who God has sent, we have failed to recognize them as such. And in our, let me just say foolishness, because I also have been there, have ended up repelling them, frustrating wow. them. Wow. And that's why I'm saying, let's first of all pray for forgiveness, yeah. for, for frustrating the people oh, who God oh, has oh, sent oh, our oh, way. Oh, for forgiveness, even for are not even recognizing those who he has sent our way. Father, I stand here myself asking you for forgiveness because even in the recent past, I looked at someone and did not recognize that they were my divine helper. And I ask you, Jehovah God, for forgiveness. We are asking, Father, for, for forgiveness for when we do not recognize our divine helpers, then we tend to frustrate them we tend not to see their value. So, Father, we ask for forgiveness. And at the same time, we ask you, Jehovah God, and thank you for those you have sent around us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the people who work for us at home. They are our divine helpers. For without them, we're not able to leave our children. We would not even be here if we did not have someone taking care of our children. Thank you, God, for all the people who support us. They support us in various ways, in big ways and in small ways. There are some of us who are even doing projects, who are building houses. 
but can have not seen that the contractor is your divine helper. Thank you, God, for the people you have sent. Thank you, Lord, even for our spouses, for those who are not, who are married. Lord, it's so easy not to see that person as a divine helper, to see their faults rather than the fact that you've called us to be partners. Yeah. Father, we are asking for forgiveness. Open our eyes to see how you have made us one, how we, our gifts complement or help us to complement one another. Yes, Lord. Open our eyes. I thank you, Lord, for the teams that you have sent around us in our workplaces, in our businesses. Those are our divine helpers. We say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Yes. You have been good to us. Mavuno, even as we count all those people, we can begin to celebrate them and to tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have sent these people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah thank God. You that you thank you that you love us. Yes, thank you for these divine helpers. Thank you, oh God. And now as we even ask you for more, as we're trusting you, God, for our bigger anointing, Lord, even your word tells us that uh, behold, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. For the mountain that you're calling us to, send us those laborers. Send us those laborers. Send us those laborers. I want to release just that anointing of divine helpers for your yes. mountains. That divine, that anointing, next level anointing for the mountain that you've claimed from God. That level, next level anointing uh, for divine helpers because we are saying from today things have shifted and we are moving to another level of serving you, Jehovah God. Yes. So Father, we receive, we receive from you the laborers, the divine helpers that will take us to the next level. We receive your goodness, we receive your love and we receive your help. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. By the way, as a leader, you're going to understand that's a powerful anointing. Yeah. Pastor Carol said, some of us, we receive helpers and then we chase them away. Because we don't know how to work with people. The anointing to work with people. To receive the team that has been given to you and not scatter them. But to gather them. And to dignify them and to give them roles. She's very good at that, by the way. It's an anointing God has given her. And as you receive it, I see powerful ministries in this house. In Jesus' name.